Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and in the last two videos I've been showing you how to put together the new pattern that I built for a wolf mask. The first video shows you how the pattern went onto cardboard and how to tape it together to make all these nice shapes. And then I showed you how to use paper strips and paste to cover it, turning it into a paper mache wolf mask. And in this video I'm going to show you how I painted it. There are so many different ways you could do it. You don't have to paint your wolf mask just like I did. As a matter of fact, one way to get some really good ideas for how you want to do yours is to just go to YouTube and do a search for how to paint a wolf. As a matter of fact, you could make a white or a black wolf or a, a completely gray wolf. It would actually be quite realistic as long as you give him uh, a black nose and some uh, black lining around the eyes. You don't have to get carried away with making all the little uh, hairs like I did. But this didn't take very long for actually doing the painting. <laughs> but I used a couple of products that do take some more drying time. So if if you really are running out of time or you just don't have any patience, uh, the, the paper mache already had to dry and now you really want to get to it, you might not want to use these products. I'll show you which ones they are. The first product that I used was this Liquitex Super Heavy Gesso. And the reason I wanted to use it was to create some fur texture, especially around the rough. And I really like the way it turned out. And the other product that I used that does take a lot of drying time is the Golden Glazing Liquid. It's an acrylic product. And I used this in order to bring out the textures in that white fur. By adding just a little bit of gray acrylic paint to the glazing liquid, I was able to kind of get a, a very soft shadow effect on all that texture that I put into the mask using the gesso. But this also takes 24 hours to dry. So if you're in a hurry, you might not want to use those two products, but go ahead and watch this video first and you'll see why I decided to use it for my wolf mask. So let's get to it. I'll show you how I did this. You can apply the heavy gesso with a knife first. That's what I did. And I made the fairly strong strokes that show fairly deep lines between tufts of hair. And then I went back over it with an old foam brush. I just wanted to slightly soften it. So now the gesso is all dry, but it's really, really white. And it's too white. It's almost glaring. So I'm going to make a, it's like a light gray, I guess you'd say. I'm using just yellow ochre, white, a little bit of burnt umber, just a teensy bit of black. And I just want a, a nice warm white. So I'm just putting this on. I added some water to it so it's really thin. and a little more of the yellow ochre to get kind of a reddish, very, very soft color. It's just a couple of spots just to make it a little bit more interesting. And they do actually have just a little bit of color. Now I'm adding a whole lot of black. I'm gonna let that dry. I can't put the black on the nose yet or around the eyes because this that white paint would get mixed in with my nice heavy black so I have to wait. I'm going back over it, I'm just putting, using the small brush this time, I'm putting darker gray. It's still a really warm gray. But it's just got a little bit more black in it than the other one did. I'll just do this um, throughout the whole uh, darker parts. It took me about an hour. I did see a YouTube video where a gentleman was using an alcohol pen, uh, just a really fine tip on it uh, to make all those hairs. A beautiful painting that he made. And I'll put a link to it down below. You might want to do your mask that way. But this did take a little bit of time, but now I'm going to let this dry probably overnight. I want to use my glazing liquid over this just to kind of bring everything together. And I don't want to put the glazing liquid 
on paint that isn't completely dry because it'll kind of strip it off if you don't. You have to be kind of careful with that stuff. So it's uh, one more time I have to wait, but it's almost done. So now this is all dry and we're ready to put the final glaze on there. What I want to do is bring out the texture in the white part just to give it a feel of shadows amongst the white fur. And I also want to darken up the ears so they're not the first thing that you see when you, you're looking at your, your wolf. So I'm going to use my acrylic glazing liquid. I use the golden brand. I really like it. There's other brands as well. Uh, this just happens to be the one I really like. I've got quite a lot on here. It's white now, but it's going to dry clear. It's a little bit hard to tell exactly how dark your glaze is because of the whiteness of the, um, the wet glazing liquid. I'm going to use just a touch of black, a touch of ultramarine blue. I'm trying to mix it up really good. I don't want any streaks. And we're going to use a paper towel um, we're going to put the glaze over there. We're going to pull most of it off. I want to make sure that it gets into the deeper textures. Now I'm just wiping almost all of it off. And it's just staying in the deeper parts of the, of the texture that we put on with the uh, heavy bodied gesso. It's so light. I'm not sure you guys are going to be able to see it on the video. I can see it. Can you see that you, you can find that texture just a little bit easier now than you could before? But it's still white. And now what I want to do is darken this part. And I'm going to do that with some burnt umber, not black. Because I want to warm that part up. That's going to go over uh, the darker parts. Now I'm going to darken it even more, just for those ears. Now you might want to have a paper towel handy that's damp because if, if you get a little bit more of the glaze on than you really wanted, it make it a lot easier to pull it off. With a damp paper towel, you can remove all of the glaze. You can put just a little bit here just to see what happens. Do I like it? Maybe just a little bit on the top where it might have a shadow on the top of this eyebrow. And he's done. That didn't take long at all. And I think it looks rather nice. So now my wolf mask is all done. The only thing left really is to put on a matte varnish uh, and I'm going to do that next. Um, you don't need to watch me do that. Any brand will work. I like to use the matte varnish just because I don't like it to be shiny, but you may have a different preference. Now, if you want to use my wolf mask pattern, you can find it at ultimatepapermache.com. Just go up and hit the pattern link at the very top. It's, it's on every page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell thingy so that you'll get notified the next time I come out with another video. In the meantime, come visit me ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.